Okay, let's pray together. Gracious God, I thank you for your loving kindness and your mercies and your, your mercies that are new every morning. And I thank you for this precious group of women and men uh, who love you with such depth and such beauty in their hearts. And I, I pray that you would bless each of them and their loved ones and draw us all closer to you today than we've ever been before. You know all the other needs that are on our hearts, and we ask you to meet those two in Jesus' name. Amen. So I thought what we would do is spend the next couple of weeks just kind of doing a, a kind of a bird's eye view of First Corinthians. Um, and today I thought I would just do a uh, kind of a, a, a really broad overview, uh, really, you know, 35,000 foot view of First Corinthians. So we have the big picture. And then we'll, we'll go back and drill down on a couple of uh, things in the next, uh, I don't know, uh, three or four weeks, whatever it takes, um, and then move on. Uh, so I encourage you to, to read the book. It's not very long. Um, if you, um, I was I'm driving up to Dayton today to get my second COVID shot, and uh, uh, some some very nice man read the, read the whole book to me while I was driving. So <laughs> it took about an hour, uh, not that long. Uh, the theme of 1 Corinthians is um, kingdom living. Uh, how do we get what is and how do we get the wisdom to live this kingdom life that Jesus described? Uh, you know, we have the Sermon on the Mount, and we have this in Luke, the Sermon on the Plain, and we have those uh, other, in addition to the Sermon on the Mount, we have those other uh, four big, long discourses of Jesus recorded for us in the Gospel of Matthew, and we have lots of parables in the Gospel of Luke and elsewhere. Um, and as we read those, uh, again and again, we are called to live differently, to live in the kingdom of God. Uh, repent, Jesus began his ministry, which means change your mind. Uh, for the kingdom of God is here. It's with you. It's now. He announced the kingdom of God. Um, a new king, a new kingdom, a new way of living. But it, kind of, it leaves us, or at least it can leave us, with a question of, uh, okay, that's awesome, but how do I do it? And if you've ever, for example, tried to live by the Sermon on the Mount through your own efforts, uh, you know how futile that is and how frustrating that is. Um, 1 Corinthians is going to answer that for us. Where do we get the wisdom that, uh, to, in order to live uh, within the kingdom? So first question, I guess, is, is what is wisdom? We need to uh, understand that and define that. Um, the word originally meant skill, um, any kind of a craftsman's skill, um, like, you know, woodworking or um, leather making or whatever. Um, and, and so the word Sophie in Greek, which is the Greek word for um, wisdom, uh, originally meant uh, skill. It's interesting that in the book of Proverbs, um, the, the word wisdom is personified as being kind of the, uh, the feminine side of God. Um, feminine pronouns are used in reference to wisdom, but clearly uh, the authors of Proverbs are, 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 are uh, pointing out to us that, and that this is part of God's nature and that we need to, and of course, for, you know, through all the, uh, the wisdom of Solomon and all of that, you know, called to make wisdom the principal thing and so forth. Uh, but, but again, what does that really mean? Well, originally, as I said, in Greek, the word meant skill. Uh, Plato, that's a picture of Plato there, kind of cool looking guy, huh? Uh, uh, use the word to mean sound judgment, but not just sound judgment, judgment that is the application of knowledge. It's insight, it's discernment, it's perceptiveness, but then it's applying that in your life. So uh, knowledge would be understanding things. Wisdom would be taking that understanding and then applying it. Um, but 
in the Bible, of course, we are told that there are two different kinds of wisdom. There's the wisdom of the world, the wisdom of this age, the wisdom that is from below, uh, the wisdom which is uh, devilish, the scripture says. And there's the wisdom of God, the wisdom from above, the wisdom of the kingdom. So as uh, biblical students, we need to distinguish between the wisdom of this age and the wisdom of the age to come. The wisdom of this age, worldly wisdom, we might call it, uh, is, is really the water we swim in. It's what we were born into. It's what we normally call common sense. Uh, it tells us to do all the things that just come naturally to people, like fight back, like look out for yourself before you take care of anybody else, like uh, plan out as best you can every possible detail of your future. You know, not now we're not just talking about being frugal, but uh, talking about having all your bases covered and having your you know, your five-year plan and your 10-year plan and your goal for what, when you're going to retire and where you're going to live. And I mean, and the whole thing just mapped out uh, and all sorts of insurance policies and such to make sure that that's all covered. Uh, in other words, being completely reliant on yourself. Um, and that's, that's the common sense way of living. Uh, worldly wisdom, of course, is also the way nations are run. Um, they use coercion, they use violence when they feel it is necessary. Um, they are uh, proponents, nations in general, are proponents of triumphalism. Triumphalism meaning uh, our, our group is triumphant, our group is better than your group, uh, especially if we won the war, that proves that the gods are on our side kind of thing. Um, the you know, worldly wisdom in terms of running nations has to do with uh, protecting and defending and um, nationalism and tribalism. Uh, and it uses common methods. Wisdom of the world uses common methods, wh whether it's on a national level or on an individual level. Um, the methods of worldly wisdom include force and manipulation. Uh, they include debate and uh, political deals where, uh, you know, not, I mean, some political deals are, are, uh, are, are perfectly innocent, I think, you know, you've got, um, you know, I represent um, uh, a, a district that has a factory in it, and you represent a district of farmers, and I want this for my factory workers, and you want that for your farmers, so I'll vote for your bill if you'll vote for mine. Uh, you know, those kind of deals, um, seem to be, for the most part, okay. But, you know, we all know that uh, uh, politicians are really good at um, making Faustian bargains and selling their souls, you know. And that's what I mean when I say uh, worldly wisdom involves debate and political deals and leveraging and money and uh, it, it, and, and really, in its essence, a worldly wisdom is always worshiping Mars, the god of uh, violence and war, and or mammon, uh, which of course is um, materialism, uh, consumerism, um, stuff. Godly wisdom, on the other hand, uh, it ha has a, a mysterious side to it. When I say mysterious, I, I I, I don't mean that it's undiscoverable. Well, yes, I do. I mean, it's undiscoverable unless God reveals it to us. Um, it, it does not come naturally to the natural human being. It's not the water we swim in. It's not uh, what ordinary everyday people would call, um, uh, you know, common sense. Uh, it's something that has to be revealed to us. And of course, the good news is that it has been revealed to us. God has revealed it. It comes from God. It's godly wisdom. And it's revealed through scripture. It's revealed uh, through nature. It's revealed through wise people who have um, lived and shared and thought and prayed throughout history. Uh, as we pay attention, as we open our ears and open our hearts uh, we begin to understand the godly wisdom, and we begin to see that godly wisdom is, is uh, um, 
conversely opposite to worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom is, is the water we swim in. Worldly wisdom is common sense. Um, godly wisdom, if, if we come to it with a natural mind, it looks absurd. You want me to do what? No. Well, if I do that, I, I, you know, I might wind up um, poor or I might wind up being cast out. I could get fired. I, you know, I, can, I could even be persecuted. I could even wind up, you know, being crucified. Yep, <laughs> you sure could. <laughs> uh, uh, if you want to follow Jesus, we have to deny ourselves, take up our crosses and follow him. So this wisdom from above is counterintuitive. It's always centered on the cross. And it always uh, comes from that lamb-like cruciform love, that love that looks like the cross when Jesus was hanging there and said, uh, you know, looking at those that were torturing to death and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, Jesus telling us to forgive our enemies why should we forgive our enemies? I mean, other than Jesus said to. Well, because God knows that it, even our, our um, staunchest enemies have something to teach us if we'll pay attention. Doesn't make them right, doesn't make them good, doesn't make what they're doing to us right or good, but there's a lesson there, always. And so if we can have that uh, lamb-like cruciform love that that forgives and loves and has an open heart and a listening and listening ears, then God is able to reveal that uh, godly wisdom to us. So I, I want to stop right there for just a moment, and I want to uh, send you back into uh, uh, little breakout groups for about ten minutes, and I. I want to invite you to discuss uh, what I've written here. Come up with a couple of modern examples of worldly versus kingdom wisdom um, that are applicable in your life today, and then discuss some practical ideas about uh, how you might deal with those things. So um, see, see if you can come up with, each, as, you, as you talk amongst yourself, see if you can come up with a couple of examples um, that, that are applicable to your life. When I say that, I mean, it, it, it's really easy to, um, or, or relatively easy, at least it is for me, to, um, uh, you know, point at other people and say that person's being worldly. Um, I, I, I want to invite us to bring it closer to home and, and, and to think about uh, what, what things perhaps have we come to accept that might fall into the category of worldly wisdom versus kingdom wisdom? Uh, how's that applicable in our lives? How, how, how do we deal with that? Um, how, how do we work through that on a practical level? So uh, I'll let the computer send you into uh, breakout groups. I invite you to discuss that for just a few minutes, and then, and then we'll come back and uh, um, what will we do? <laughs> we'll come back and uh, and and move on from from there.